स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया so further uh, before we discuss the problems in this category let me just eliminate the pathetic cases or the the problems which are abnormal or the problems where we have rigid extremals right so so let us look at problems with rigid extremals and we are not going to discuss problems of this category from after this okay so what happens with problems with rigid extremals right so i am talking about problems where the derivative of the the constraint del g del q j dot is equal to 0 right okay so so let us see what happens to this class of problems with an example so the example that we have is we have the functional of the form integral from t0 to t1 of q1 times square root of 1 plus q2 dot square dt subject to subject to q1 dot square plus q2 dot square is equal to 0 right and and the boundary conditions are are q bar of t not is q0 bar and q bar at t1 is q1 bar okay well the non holonomic constraints we need real valued solution the non holonomic constraints imply that the only solution that we may have is that q1 dot is equal to q2 dot is equal to 0 right so what we have is the only real solution of the constraint of the constraint constraint is that we have q1 dot is equal to q2 dot is equal to 0 right and that gives us the solution that q1 and q2 are constants okay now so what this means is that if we look at our j if we look at so which means that j of y is nothing but integral from t0 to t1 of q1 1 plus q2 dot square dt so this is going to be zero because of this because of this uh, condition here and all i get is i can directly integrate so q1 so q1 is also a constant so this is also a constant so i can directly integrate this integral to get that this is equal to q1 at i know the value of q1 at one point that is at 0 at t0 so q1 at let's say t0 times the dt integral gives me t1 minus t0 so i get so the functional gives us a straight line without any possibility of varying uh, varying the function q right so no arbitrary so in the case of rigid extremal there is no arbitrary arbitrary variation variation in q bar possible and the only extremal of q bar is that this is a constant c not c1 so this is a constant a constant extremal so we get an extremal which is also the only solution to the problem right so the rigid extremal case is going to be handled in the manner that has been shown in this example later on when we state a more general result we are going to uh, we are going to separate out the case when the problem will have rigid extremals versus the case when the problems will not have rigid extremals okay so let us state a summarizing result in the form of a theorem so this theorem is theorem 13 it says that let j be my functional so j be my functional functional defined by 
defined by a 1. What is a 1? Well, a 1 we need to go back few, few slides. We have a 1, a 2 and a 3 defined in the description of the non holonomic constraint problem. So, they, j is a functional defined by a 1 and and uh, and I have that where my vector q which is q 1 q 2 q n and l l is the is the integrand of the functional is a smooth function it is a smooth function of the variables t q bar q bar dot right and suppose suppose j has an extremum suppose j has an extremum j has an extremum at q bar which is c 2 of t 0 to t 1 subject to subject to the boundary condition subject to the boundary condition a 2 j has an extremal at at this point q bar subject to the boundary condition a 2 and the constraint and the constraint a 3 right. And further we assume well let me just write it in the second in the next page further assume assume that we are not dealing with the rigid extremal case assume that del g del q j dot is not 0 right for some j from 1 to n del q right for some j from 1 to n right. So, this is non 0 for some j from 1 to n ok. So, so then the result says then there exists a constant there exists a constant lambda 0 and a continuous function a continuous function lambda of t let, let me call this as lambda 1 of t not both 0 not both 0 such that my k described by k is a function of t comma q comma q dot described by lambda 0 of l minus lambda 1 t of g is a solution is a solution to this Euler Lagrange equation given by the following following form minus partial partial q k of k right ok where my where my so this is my capital k and where my small k these indices k are from 1 to n so this is a set of n euler lagrange equation now we have already included so this this result this result has already included included the abnormal case right for included the abnormal case this is when lambda is equal to 0 right and so for the abnormal case we set lambda 0 equal to 0 and lambda 1 of t is not identically 0. So, that is the case for the scenario when we have an abnormal problem. So, so lambda 1 is not identically 0 on the interval on the interval t from t 0 to t 1 right and we have that d d t of lambda 1 del g del q k dot minus lambda 1 del g del q k is equal to 0 right. 
So, in this case, if a problem is abnormal, then it must be satisfying this, this condition for each component k, right. So, let me call this relation as A4. So, the moment we are dealing with an abnormal problem, we must check this criteria, right. So, which means that let me segregate the result for normal problems, right, or the problems we are generally going to solve in non holonomic constraint optimization. So, for normal problems, what I have is as follows the result is stated in the form of a theorem, theorem 14. So, let, let j q right j q l and g be given as in the previous result as in theorem 13 which is our previous result and if q is a normal is a normal extremal if q is a solution to the normal to the Euler Lagrange equation for the normal case is a normal extremal. If there exists a function, if there exists a function lambda 1 of t such that q is a solution, q is a solution to d d t of del f del q k dot ddt of del q k del q k dot minus del f del q k this is also equal to 0 right. So, for the normal problems we must satisfy this form of Euler Lagrange equation we call this as a 5 ok abnormal problem a 4 normal problems a 5 where where my function f is given by the integrand l of the functional j minus lambda 1 t times the non holonomic constraint g of t comma q bar comma q bar dot right where where i i must say that lambda 1 of t so lambda 1 of t is unique uniquely determined right determined such that such that the above criteria a 5 holds right ok. So, we we end the discussion on the theory of for non holonomic problems and state and and follow it up with some examples. A quick example that we have that I have right now is as follows. So, the first example that we have is we need to extremize extremize j of q which is given by integral t 0 to t 1 of q 1 square plus q 2 square d t. So, we need to find find the extremal well find the extremal for j subject to the boundary condition subject to the boundary condition uh, a 2 a 2 is the same set of boundary conditions we described in the de definition of non holonomic problems and the constraint and the constraint and the constraint g of t comma q bar comma q bar dot which is also equal to q 1 dot plus q 2 plus q 1 is equal to 0. So, this is a constraint that we impose which is a non holonomic constraint and again we now well we do not know whether the problem that we have posed is a normal or an abnormal problem. So, to 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 find what sort of problem is that we assume first we assume that the problem is abnormal. If that be the case, we will be able to uh, find out the solution to this system, right. So, if we use our condition A4 that we have mentioned for no abnormal problem on G, right. So, we see that we are going to get 
two sets of equations that is we solve the Euler Lagrange equation for g with lambda 1 also as the unknown I get with respect to the first component I get the following relation lambda 1 dot t minus lambda 1 of t is equal to 0 and from here I get a solution that lambda 1 of t is c naught e to the power t right. For the second case I have k equal to 2 and from here I get the solution that lambda 1 of t times del g del q 2 is equal to 0. Now, lambda 1 is not 0 because it is we have already found lambda 1 which means that which means that del g del q 2 must be equal to 0. However, however notice this constraint. This constraint tells us that del g del q 2 is equal to 1 right. So, we arrive at a contradiction it cannot be 0 and 1 at the same time which means that this is a, a wrong assumption. The assuming that the problem is abnormal is a wrong assumption which means that the problem belongs to the normal category or we need to solve A5, A5 version of the Euler Lagrange ok. So, so let us continue here. So, the A5 version of the Euler Lagrange so, normal problem ok. We, we expect that my Euler Lagrange equation will be satisfied with f given by with f given by L minus lambda 1 times g and that is also equal to uh, well my f is my L is q 1 square plus q 2 square minus lambda 1 t of g which is q 1 dot plus q 1 plus q 2 ok. All I have to do now is to plug in into our Euler Lagrange operator and we see that we get set of we get a set of two equations for k equal to 1 component. I see that the relation we have is lambda 1 dot minus lambda 1 plus 2 q 1 is 0. I am directly plugging these expression of f into a 5 to get the set of two relations lambda 1 minus 2 q 2 is equal to 0. Note that now we have two equations with three unknowns lambda 1, q 1 and q 2. So, the third equation is given by the non holonomic constraint and that is going to completely uh, solve our system. So, I am going to directly give the solution and the students are asked to check that this is indeed the solution satisfying these two equations along with the holonomic constraints. So, the solution is as follows my q 1 is a linear combination of the sinh function and the cos hyperbolic function and my q 2 comes out to be again another linear combination of the sinh function ok minus k 1 square root 2 plus k 2 cos hyperbolic of square root 2 t and finally, my lambda 1 which is the Lagrange multiplier comes out to be minus 2 times k 1 plus k 2 square root 2 times sinh of square root 2 t minus k 1 square root 2 plus k 2 cos hyperbolic of square root 2 t. So, that completes the discussion on this example. Let us uh, finally, look at one quick example before we wrap up. Uh, the example that I have uh, on discussion is the revisitation of the catenary problem. So, we revisit we revisit catenary. So, and and pose it as a Lagrange problem ok.
So, the problem is suppose the length of the cable is L and we are given. So, suppose the length. So, I am not writing the entire uh, statement of the problem because this has been done several times, but we are we are posing the problem as a form of a non holonomic problem. So, suppose the length of the cable is L and I am given that the end points are of the problem are x 0 y 0 and x 1 y 1, where I am given such that I am given the condition which removes the rigid extremal criteria. So, L is bigger than the distance between the two points, right. So, that well, so that is my L. So, L is bigger than the square root of this and I have the potential energy functional given by given by j of y, which is also equal to integral from 0 to L y d s, right. We see that my s is the arc length of the problem. So, I am going to I am going to pose the problem in the form of the variable s now and we see and we will see why. So, I see that my arc length element d s is d x square plus d y square or, or from here I see that d s square is equal to d x square plus d y square or what we see that from here I can say that d x d s square plus d y d s square is equal to 1. Let me write a shorthand notation x prime square plus y prime square is equal to 1 or where the primes denote the derivative with respect to s. So, then let us introduce new sets of variables. So, we use uh, we use the variables q 1 to denote our x component, we denote the variable q 2 by our y component and we such that now my arcs my arc length parameter s is the independent variable and we denote it by uh, uh, well. So, that replaces our original independent variable t right. So, then we are we are seeking. So, the problem says we are now going to seek the extremal of this functional j of j of q bar comma q bar dot comma s of the form of the form of integral from 0 to l. Now, y y is q 2. So, q 2 d s. So, y is q 2 and subject to the constraint which is the box condition here right. So, subject to subject to the constraint that x dot or I x prime square plus y prime square is equal to 1. Notice that this is our non holonomic constraint ok. So, so we have posed the problem in the form of a non holonomic constraint optimization problem and further we close this problem in the you by stating the boundary conditions q bar at the starting point is x 0 comma y 0 and q bar at the final point l is x 1 comma y 1 ok. So, we can show that we can quickly uh, we can quickly solve for the extremal by showing that the uh, well we can first quickly eliminate the abnormal solution here by showing that the abnormal solutions. So, no abnormal solutions because we have already mentioned that because we have already mentioned that our length is greater than the distance between the two points. So, we have already avoided the case of rigid extremals. So, we do not expect any abnormal solutions. So, so which means that which means that there will be a solution to our right well so which means that there will be our solution to our system a5 right so which means let me just state the euler lagrange equation 
So, Euler Lagrange equations are to be satisfied with our function f which is L minus lambda 1 times g which is also equal to. So, f is q 2 minus lambda 1 times times g which is which is this quantity here which is the circle quantity. So, x 1 prime is q 1 uh, q 1 dot square and x 2 sorry y prime is q 2 dot square minus 1 this is set equal to 0. And so, we need to uh, satisfy the Euler Lagrange equation for this function. Let me just quickly write down uh, the set of two Euler Lagrange equation. We get that 2 lambda 1 t times q 1 dot is equal to k 1. I have directly used the Euler Lagrange and integrated once to get the following set of two equations 2 lambda 1 times q 2 dot is another constant k 2 plus t, where my k 1 and k 2s are constants. I have already integrated my Euler Lagrange once to get a first order ordinary differential equation. And so, we use we use this let me call this system as triangle, we use this system and the constraint and the constraint uh, and the constraint let me call this constraint as denoted by a square and the constraint square to get to the solution. So, let me just write down the entire solution q 1, q 2 and lambda we and students are asked to check that these are indeed the solution. So, lambda 1 of t comes out to be half square root of k 1 square plus t plus k 2 square and q 1 of t is equal to sinh inverse sinh inverse of t plus k 2 divided by k 1 plus k 3 and and my final my final variable q 2 of t is equal to square root of t squ well square root of k 1 square plus t plus k 2 square plus another constant k 4. Now, notice before we end our discussion notice that this solution is also of the form of cos hyperbolic cos hyperbolic form right. And we so far whatever problems we have done for catenary we have shown that the solution boils down to the hyperbolic cosine function form as well. So, this is no different as well. So, we end our discussion with just one particular statement by saying that the, the class of non holonomic problems are widespread and they are specially widespread in mechanics right. So, they are widespread in the problems involving mechanics. However, the non holonomic constraint problems are more or less avoided because in this class of problems the Hamilton's principle can are not applicable. So, so what I just said is so non holonomic problems uh, constraints. So, non holonomic constraints are avoided because in this class of problems because in this class of problems the Hamilton's principle or the principle of least action which is widespread in this Newtonian mechanics is not applicable. Okay. So, this I state without going into depth. So, these are not applicable and for students who want to understand more in depth about this statement they are referred to this book by L A Pars a treatise a treatise on analytical dynamics analytical dynamics and this is by this is by Heinemann publishers a very classical book published in 65 so thank you very much for listening and 
finally i end my discussion by saying that in the next lecture i am going to talk about a, a slight digression to our class of uh, extremals namely the class with variable endpoints thank you very much